Hi guys, welcome to HSC Chemistry and the production of materials topic. We've been looking at polymers recently, um, particularly polymers of polyethylene, um, the LDPE uh, and HDPE varieties. And now I just want to try and expand that understanding a little bit. So we look particularly at the properties of different polymers and the sorts of factors that affect these different properties. Well, there's a number of different factors that are important when we're looking at polymer properties. And these include the length of the chain, the alignment of the chain, the number of branches, the functional units or the stiffening that can occur, cross linkage, and also additives. When we look at um, functional units and some of the stiffening that occurs, we'll we'll look at a couple of derivatives from polyethylene um, that include PVC, which comes from um, the monomer chloroethene or vinyl chloride, and also polystyrene, which comes from a um, uh, replacement, a substitution of a hydrogen with a benzene ring. But we'll look at these um, later on. So the first thing we want to look at is chain length. And polymers with long chains have higher mechanical strength and higher melting points than those with the shorter chains. And the reason for that is fairly straightforward. And that is because long chains mean more atoms, more atoms mean greater dispersion forces between the, change, uh, between the chains. Greater intermolecular forces means a stronger polymer. So if we have a nice long chain like this, then there are going to be dispersion forces between the chains. And each of these dispersion forces um, is going to be the same type of force. And so therefore, if there are more of them, then simply we get a uh, stronger link between the two chains. And each of these is a dispersion force. And quite obviously, um, the longer the molecule, the more dispersion forces there are between individual molecules, and therefore the um, greater the strength there is in that polymer. And that's also going to affect things like the melting and boiling points. Now the chain arrangement can also change, and this is going to be particularly useful when we're looking at things like our um, uh, like our low density polyethylene and also our high density polyethylenes. So where we pack the polymer units very densely together, then we have greater intermolecular forces between the chains. As I said before, if those chains are nice and straight, then we're going to get lots of dispersion forces occurring between the chains. And this increases their density, but also their strength and their melting point. So these are going to have high strength and high melting points and boiling points as a result of all of these dispersion forces uh, between the chains. Where there is more branching, then we have um, less dispersion forces. So um, where we have branching like this, um, we do not have the same type packing and therefore there's less dispersion forces um, between the two different um, molecules, large molecules. And so less dispersion forces equals lower MP and also equals um, uh, lower strength. So if you are thinking about LDPE and HDPE, which of these different types would you predict to have the lower melting point and why? And hopefully you said the lower melting point will be the low density polyethylene, and that's because it has a smaller number of dispersion forces per molecule than the high density, which is packed much more tightly together. Now, some of the effects of chain branching. Uh, when we're looking at chain branching, we want um, to think about the fact that this really directly links to density. So for something like LDPE, where the density is much lower, the poly polymer chains take up more volume and because density is equal to mass over volume, then if the volume increases, then rho, the um, density, will decrease. Likewise, 
Um, when the chains are not packed closely together, we have lower um, intermolecular forces, and therefore this is low mechanical strength. So again, LDPE has lower mechanical strength, and HDPE is therefore much higher, uh, or stronger, shall we say. They're more rigid. This also is uh, the reason, or, or the um, logic behind flexibility. When there's less interaction between the chains, they're more capable of sliding over one another. So one of the things we do know about LDPE is it's more flexible, okay? It is less rigid and it's capable of uh, flow. And so things like um, glad wrap is one of the examples of this type of LDPE where we have uh, something that's very easily reshaped um, but still retains that plastic property. And finally, of course, melting point, um, because the chains are less packed, uh, less closely packed together in LDPE, then we have less intermolecular forces between them and therefore easier for them to be separated with lower energy. And so um, lower melting points for each of these. And of course the reverse is true. Now sometimes we have the addition of um, additional functional groups that have usually been substituted. So in this case, you can see this is a benzene ring Okay, which basically has the structure C, 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 oops, C, C, one, two, three, four, five, uh, six. All right, and then two, three, four, five, six. So not a very good hexagon there, but basically six carbons um, with alternating single and double bonds. And that's what benzene looks like, and these would all be hydrogens. And of course, one of those has been substituted, um, so here, um, to attach to the carbon uh, in place of a hydrogen, which would have been in this position here. So what this does is it changes the nature of the monomer firstly, but then also the polymer, with the result that we can end up with um, additional functional groups which change the shape. This is a particularly useful one um, because uh, it creates additional um, gaps within the um, polymer structure, and we can take advantage of that by adding um, gas, adding air, which allows the polymer to really fluff out. And so you would be aware that um, polystyrene is often used in those little beads um, for bean bags and things like that, because they're basically the polymer has just been filled with air, and the um, additional functional unit of the benzene ring allows for that to happen. We can also do a substitution for um, chloroethene, uh, which is also called vinyl chloride. And in this case, we have a, a chlorine instead of a hydrogen. And of course, this here is a polar bond. And polarity um, changes things quite significantly because then we have a dipole-dipole interaction rather than just a um, dispersion force and dipole-dipole interactions are much stronger and therefore this is going to increase both the mechanical strength and also the melting point. And we use um, chloroethene which is also called vinyl chloride to produce the polymer PVC or polyvinyl chloride and that's used in um, piping and things like that. So we get a little bit of change as a result of the replacement of hydrogen with other groups. Another thing we can have is crosslinks. I uh, won't talk too much about crosslinks, but you can see crosslinks is basically situations where there are molecules, smaller molecules, which are actually holding some of these other chains together, and it increases the rigidity of the molecule, and also additives. And additives can be something that um, can be just for aesthetic reasons to improve the appearance of the polymer or also functional. And they would include things like pigments, um, plasticizers, which sometimes soften the plastic, stabilizers to resist heat uh, and light decomposition, and also certain types of substances which reduce the flammability. This has been a big one. Thanks for staying with it and appreciate you watching.